Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and the results of 2024 Decanter World Wine Awards are out, so let's discuss them. A while ago I made the reaction video about Wine Spectator's Top 100 where I mentioned that I follow more closely Decanter World Wine Awards. Now with the 2024 Decanter World Wine Awards results out, I thought we could take some time to discuss not only the results themselves, but also the significance of this competition to the wine industry. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Venezia and more on them later. Wines at the Decanter World Wine Awards are tasted by the industry's top professionals, including sommeliers, masters of wine, masters of sommelier, as well as journalists, buyers and distributors. And it has been my honor to interview one of the five co-chairs, Andrew Jefford, on my podcast, and you can watch it here. This year, judges tasted more than 18,000 wines and let that sink for a while. Can you imagine the logistical challenges that requires? All those wines must be gathered in a warehouse that can hold that number, registered and ensured that these are the correct labels and vintages and that they are sent to the correct table of judges. This in itself is a great achievement. Judges are tasting wines blind, or some might say semi-blind if you will, because they are informed of the grape variety or varieties price range, region of origin, as well as some technical data such as alcohol and sugar content. For those of you who love the 100-point scale, wines are tasted according to it. And the top 50 wines are awarded with the Best in Show medal. So let's look closer at the Decanter World Wine Awards 2024. For those of you who feel disappointed that the famous Super Tuscans First Growth Bordeaux and more expensive names from Napa are not on the list, do not fear. Wines for the Decanter World Wine Awards are submitted by the producers themselves. So if you cannot find your favorite wine and start to question its quality, it is not because they are not great or because the judges do not know what they are talking about. In many cases, it simply means that these wines were not submitted for tasting. It really poses more risk to some of the well-established names, because receiving silver or even bronze medal would harm their brand, especially so if the wines are sold for three or four digit prices. Also, do not expect top burgundy names to appear here. Some of these producers are struggling to supply their historical clients, let alone increase the awareness of their brand and wines via Decanter World Wine Awards. However, you can still find well-recognized names that cement their place in the fine wine world, such as Chateau Desclan, which received Best in Show with their label Le Clan, Charles Heidsack with their Blanc de Millionaire 2014, also best in show, and Champagne Rare with Platinum. Keeping in mind that wines are submitted by the producers themselves, the Cantor World Wine Awards is the best list to follow for industry trends. We have been talking a lot about exploring cooler winemaking regions in Americas and Oceania, and behold, there are two Tasmanian Pinot Noirs amongst the 50 best in show and two Argentinians from Tupon Gato in Uco Valley, Mendoza. Furthermore, I have mentioned in several of my videos that winemakers are currently exploring indigenous grape varieties more widely. This could be due to climate change and addressing the fact that grapes previously grown do not deliver the same quality as they used to or simply to experiment with historic grape varieties that were abandoned either due to low yields, struggle to ripen, or other reasons that make them more difficult to work with. And we see wine from Rioja, best in show, made 100% from Graciano grape variety. Now I know I will want to try it. From Priorat, there is pure Carignana, not Garnacha, which is more linked with this region. And for me, increasingly hot topic is Greece and their wines from less recognized indigenous grape varieties. And we have three 97 points worth wines from Greece with both Best in Show and Platinum Awards, with one of them being Retsina. 
Furthermore, we see more hybrid grape varieties represented in the awards, and even one from a small country where I reside, Latvia, with bronze medal for a Rondo grape variety. So we see here the expansion of wine producing countries, more focus on indigenous grape varieties and shift towards grapes that are better suited to the changing climate. And while some of us have been talking about this for a while, we finally see the results in the form of great points and medals. If you remember my video on Wine Spectator's Top 100, one of my criticism was that it lacked diversity. And going through the results of Decanter World Wine Awards, I was happy to see highly scored wines from less discovered wine regions, grape varieties and styles. It invites people to explore and explore in a more secure way because the judging of the wines has already been done, reducing our risk when choosing these wines for our own consumption. In the best in show category, I found wines from Japan, United Kingdom and Switzerland, with latter being made from an obscure grape variety, Petit Arvin. Furthermore, there are two Beaujolais Cru in best in show, proving what many of us sommeliers have said for a while now, that Beaujolais is one of the most underrated regions in France, for sure. In all honesty though, both of these wines came from the same producer, meaning that I should seek it out. Additionally, with Platinum Awards, which total 116 this year, we see Canada, Turkey, Slovenia and Georgia. While these less discovered wine regions, countries or even grape varieties are highlighted, you still find classics such as Grand Cru Burgundy, Napa Valley, Champagne and dear to my heart Barolos in the best in show. Showing that it is not just simply about ditching the old and looking for the new. Speaking of classics and fine wine, I wanted to introduce today's sponsor, Venezia. Imagine blending your wine passion with alternative investing by keeping some of your bottles in an optimized warehouse. That's what Venezia offers with its digital seller. It allows your wine to grow in value safely while continuously monitored on the blockchain. With Venezia, only top-tier wines are sourced directly from renowned wineries, becoming more than a collection. While you enjoy some of your fine wines at home, they ensure optimum conditions for the rest of your collection. Venezia transforms your wine into a digital asset, ensuring security, transparency and real-time tracking of your asset storage conditions, supporting you in a sustainable collection approach to your NFTs. Revolutionary, right? So, if you're keen to make your wine passion fruitful, hop over to Venezia.com to turn your love for wine into your next smart investment. I'm super excited that an extra shout out is given to the value labels, which are highlighted with a small V attached to the name of the wine. While it was somewhat confusing for me at first, because it resembled the vegan logo often found on wine labels, in this case, V actually stands for value. This means that wine's price is below 14.99 British pounds, which is around 19 American dollars. This resonates with me because I have always said that it is not the greatest art to make an amazing wine for a high price point. You can hire the greatest professionals and consultants, invest in the best technologies, control fermentation temperatures remotely, and sleep soundly. However, making great wine that does not require small fortune for us, wine lovers to purchase, is much more difficult. I lost count of how many 95-point wines had the value sign attached to them. And these were not just from developing winemaking regions and countries, these were wines from Bordeaux, California, Rioja and Rivera del Duero. Unfortunately, not everything is as bright and rosy as it looks at the first glance. Great number of these wines are not available on the international market. I wanted to make a video similarly as I did with Wine Spectator and taste wines as we discuss them. However, many of the top scored wines in Best in Show were only available in the markets of their production. This furthermore only highlights how little we get to experience these truly great wines 
minds that rarely leave the borders of their region or country. And that is especially painful for such countries as Chile, Australia, New Zealand and Argentina. Because export markets are mainly dominated by large producers, small artisanal winemakers might find it difficult to penetrate the market. So this could be a homework to many wine importers and distributors who are looking to discover new regions or even estates to go through these lists and find a wine their portfolio is missing. And make sure to watch my other video where I tasted some of the wines from Wine Spectator's Top 100.